this is odd because I loathe to be on film in any way, especially on video, but I have to do this in order to explain what has been my demise and my suffering in 2024. On the 4th of January, I was seated here at my kitchen table, which also functions as a library, and writing a letter when the doorbell of a neighbor who shares the same roof um, began to ring aggressively. Um, no one said anything during three different aggressive rings, and I couldn't see who it was, because as you can see, there's a wall here. And I then uh, jumped up and ran around the front of the house afraid that maybe it was someone who needed help in an emergency because there's a park across the street used by a lot of people who come on foot. Um, I found instead two police officers in my driveway um, here in search of me illegally. Um, I have since, that was on the 4th of January, today is the 6th of August. Um, the very uh, next day, uh, on the 5th of January, I went down to Northport Police Station to complain, um, to put in an official complaint about multiple laws that these police officers had broken in order to come to my house and issue me a trespass warning um, for a place where I had not been trespassing and um, they had not had any contact with people with authority over the building before they arrived to my house. Um, and that's when intimidation and punishment um, and the double standard against mental illness really escalated. Um, the reason they came here in the first place was they had been gossiping with some people while on duty um, and uh, discriminating against people with mental illness in my absence. Um, they arrived at the disturbance call after I had gone, uh, left the scene. I had gone into the former employer, a road builder, um, in search of paychecks that had not arrived per contract and um, for which I had not received a response to either text or calls um, in looking for information on these paychecks. Um, so going into a building um, where people rent a few units um, as a business um, to speak to them about the contract that you have with them that they are not answering you in any other way is not trespassing. It is exercising your right to liberty. Um, that's a constitutional right. It's in the body of the Constitution. Um, and so that's all I did. Um, and I left um, as I said I would once I had the information that they had paid me illegally. Um, and police arrived after I was gone, long after I was gone. Um, I have since paid Northport Police Department to redact this body cam and, and give it to me. It's right here on this um, this uh, thumb drive, I guess is that what it's called. And I have transcribed it. Um, so I know what was said in it. I know what occurred. And it is replete with discrimination against mental illness and statements made by the police that make them sound as if they have authority over people with mental illness that they don't have. This means they have the sense of having powers that are excessive. Um, and they speak this throughout this. Uh, so uh, going and complaining did not go well. I had to scream at the Sergeant Brown and the other officers who had collected um, for this official uh, complaint form, which is the reason that I had gone down there. It's called a 748, and I was call, told that this is what I needed to complain. And instead of just giving me one of these, um, I was subjected to more than half an hour, maybe 45 minutes of um, interrogation. And I had to scream at them to give me one of these. I had to watch them um, make gestures about my mental illness and say things about it that seemed to them um, to uh, uh, allowable and to mean that I wasn't allowed to complain because I have mental illness and I'm, therefore I'm not a citizen. This is a citizen complaint affidavit. Um, I did file that one, and there is a process for that. Um, rather than follow the process, Northport Police closed the investigation that I filed under oath um, without ever contacting me and refusing to tell me the date on which it was closed. That's not how police are held accountable for their behavior. Now, recently in the news, we had a, a woman named Sonia Massey who was shot dead um, in her own home. Um, and then afterwards, the police officer, whose name I will not use, 
um, who uh, shot her dad said uh, that she was a crazy fucking bitch and thought that it was okay that he had shot her dead in her own home, excessive use of force because of this. It wasn't just because she was black. It was also because those of us who are in this community are considered sub-citizens. The police and so far all of my government, including the judicial district, system has treated this as if I do not belong to the community and instead they protect and serve the rest of society from me because I am part of a community that doesn't count as citizens. So it went very poorly on the 5th and I went directly then um, to City Hall. I spoke with the assistant city manager after demanding to speak to someone because it's un not okay that the only people to whom you can complain about police conduct is the police, which is what I was being told um, when I finally did, you know, manage to put in this futile um, complaint that they just closed anyway months later and didn't even tell me that they were closing it and won't tell me when. Um, so after speaking with the assistant city manager, Juliana Belia, I believe is her name, um, she got a, during it, she got a call from the city, so chief of police, and they were, he was going to be meeting with me about my complaints and my concerns about the complaint process as well. Now, not just the, com the misconduct on the 4th, but it's the 5th, and I've got complaints about what I've experienced in trying to complain, because the police are not above criticism, and they need to be, they need to be evaluated and, and reprimanded if they've done wrong, even small infractions. So... A meeting was set up with I thought was the chief of police and the assistant city manager on the 9th and I arrived for this meeting now that was turned out that it was deputy chief uh, uh, Morales is his last name Chris is his first name and I did not know this until the 17th of January but nonetheless uh, his initial beginning of this meeting he's there's a spokesperson for the police about whether or not they had any misconduct and he starts the conversation about my civil dispute about how much he knows about my civil dispute I wasn't there to discuss my civil dispute with him I was there to discuss his police officers getting involved with a civil dispute which is illegal and breaking laws against me when they did so because they got involved in favor uh, with a Des Moines group which is a government contracted business they had no right to do that so I interrupted him. He is the deputy chief of police, but I interrupted him at the beginning of the meeting. He uh, was there as a spokesperson, but he both denied misconduct and then refused to go on record denying misconduct. Now, if you're there as a spokesperson and you're going to deny misconduct, it is your duty to go on record denying misconduct. He absolutely wasted my time. So I had driven down there for nothing. The meeting ended and uh, my, all three of us walked to the elevators together and outside of the elevators in silence uh, I looked up and I said to the deputy chief of police what should have happened on the 4th of January which was his officers should have taken the report because a disturbance was over and the person who caused the disturbance was no longer there so legally that's all they could do and I mentioned this and what the deputy chief of police did was look down at me and say something to the effect of of, you didn't have to go to the door or I didn't have to answer the door now his police didn't didn't identify themselves so I had no idea who it was um, and he's a deputy chief of police telling a citizen that she could have ignored his officers is that a good use of resources is that what he should be telling citizens they should do is ignore police officers but anyway I reacted upset because I had already told people galore that I had done so because I thought a stranger needed my help and he then said something to the effect of, you didn't have to say it was you. Now these were police officers who had already identified me. My vehicle was in the driveway, registered to me. They'd already seen my license that looks like me. And I'm in my driveway. Now had I done that, that would have been a crime. It is a crime to lie to police. More importantly, I have dissociative identity disorder. So he told me I could have in my own driveway pretended I didn't know who I was or pretended I'm not who I am. This got me very upset. He was derelict of duty by not taking responsibility for the extreme misconduct that happened on the 4th and then the 5th 
and then he which so the whole morning was psychological abuse but then he verbally abused me by shifting the blame on to me so i started yelling at him and i got my first criminal charge ever he had me arrested he had me removed instead of admitting that his police officers on the fourth and the fifth broke laws against me that is using a criminal charge to cover up misconduct and to deflect the blame onto the citizen. Now, did he get out a decibel reader to see that I was yelling loud, louder than it's allowable? It was the city hall lobby. I can say what I want. Can he tell me to leave and that I'm disturbing the peace because he doesn't like what I'm saying? He doesn't like the content of what I have to say? No, he can't, but he did. And that's using his position as the deputy chief of police and his ability to have me arrested instead of admitting the misconduct. Now, where we are at this point is I have now two felony charges, and I'm gonna do my best to complete the story so that people will know at least, that people who, if this, if this is my full on demise. On the 17th of January, I then went down to the Northport Police Department to fill in two more of these citizen complaint affidavits. One about Sergeant Brown on the 5th intimidating and making me, you know, go through uh, hoops in order to be able to do what should be my right, which was torture and unfair and abuse mistreatment. And the other about Deputy Chief Morales on the 9th. Um, and uh, the, the way this works is a supervisor on duty comes out to the lobby, he signs, takes it under oath, and he leaves and he puts it in the internal affairs system. That's the way it's supposed to work. I have a copy of the internal affairs um, um, uh, procedure here. Um, and instead of doing that, the officer numbered the pages, made me photocopies, handed me my photocopies, and I have to this day no idea what has happened to those originals. He decided that since he didn't want to take my complaints, since he wanted to cover up the intimidation on the 5th and the abuse on the 9th, both of which pertinent to my trespassing on, on City Hall charge, he just discarded them. Now, how do I know this? Well, um, I got no response whatsoever to any of what I thought were four citizen complaint affidavits in January. Um, I processed the misdemeanor charge. Let's do the best to set that aside for now. Um, it was going to be dismissed. It is scheduled to be dismissed, the best I understand. And I... Um, uh, pestered them for this body cam that I had made a deposit on on the 7, 24th of January. Um, and the, they should have answered me on the 5th about how to see the body cam that I would have gotten for free and very much so sooner than four months, but they didn't answer me on the 5th. And so I had to pester them um, about getting this body cam, got it long after what I was paid to have it redacted. And um, when I started watching it and had veiled confirmation of things like they didn't identify themselves at the door, um, which is dangerous to everyone uh, and illegal, not procedure, um, not following procedure when you're on duty is not is illegal. That's why it's procedure. Your law enforcement and what procedure is, is the enforcement of the laws. So... Yeah, I found out on the uh, 5th of June that they, was, they were faked, that they were discarded. And I did this by on the, on the uh, uh, 14th of May, I was there at Northport Police Department to file citizen complaint affidavit. And I asked the supervisor on duty, Sergeant Shields, um, for a, a status update on these four that I had done in January. He left the lobby, came back, and he told me that there were only two. One was closed and the other was open. Uh, it was against Garrison, uh, which is the chief of police. And I did that on the 31st of January. Um, I made him re repeat himself to some degree. He didn't repeat everything. And I recorded him saying he didn't know what happened to the other ones. He doesn't know what I'm talking about, and, you know, whatever. So I knew on the 14th of May that there was something wrong um, that with these um, complaints that I think I, you know, follow up. And of course, now I know that they're not following procedure by closing them without contacting me and refusing to tell me a date. Um, that's not the procedure. That's not how a, a, a police department is accountable to citizens for its conduct. They don't have a procedure that they say work is what you do and then just do something else. That's not having integrity. That's breaking the law. So... 
uh, I figured out on the 5th of um, June that the officer had faked it on the 17th by looking at my photocopies of the four, and the two from the 17th had no signature or anything from the officer, whereas the one from the 5th and the 31st both did, under oath, their signature, the date, etc. So I went down to Northport Police Department with having filled out three brand new ones, and I had my photocopies from the 17th of January. I first got into lying at the records department um, and I asked for what turns out to be called a CAD report on the, from the 5th of January um, and I was told I was going to be in line, there were a few people ahead of me, I just pay, have to pay a few cents for this one piece of paper. So I understand that I'm in line and I go over to the recorded line and I pick it up and I explain that I need the supervisor to come out to, to take some of these. And what happens is, um, and I explain that one of them is about faking it on the 17th and uh, on the recorded line. Um, and uh, there's a little delay, but a sergeant comes out very angry. I realize I recognize him from some thing over the previous months. It's the um, 5th of June and this all started on the 4th of January. Um, but I don't immediately recognize him as the officer who had faked it on the 17th. It takes me quite some time to realize that. Um, he was uh, resistant to going anywhere near my paperwork. Then this is his job. That he's, a, he's the supervisor on duty, and what he's supposed to do is take this under oath and enter it into the internal affairs system, but he won't. Um, he once asked me questions about why I have a copy of the procedure. He seems angry about that. Um, he's asking me questions, and he refuses, uh, and he leaves the lobby under chase. Um, he gets me upset as soon as he's refusing, of course, or trying to refuse and lying. He's just lying. Um, and I chase him basically to the end of the, you know, goes behind the door with everybody in their guns. And I'm in a little romper and a bikini and I've never carried a gun or had a desire to. So I'm not a threat to anybody that way. But stereotyping me about it is the reason police officers came to my house, which is illegal. Um, um, on the 4th of January, but let's see, I, um, a guy picked up that recorded line and demanded that he come back out and at the very least refuse to take these things on, on record, on like and record him refusing to take these things. And my purse and the folder were sitting on a, on a counter um, on one side with the records department on the other side of this lobby. And he walked out and picked up my folder and my purse to carry them outside. Now, I'm a citizen in the middle of a transaction in the lobby of, of the police station, which I have every right to do. I'm a citizen. That's what I'm doing. And he doesn't have a right to come in. I need my folder and my purse for this transaction that they haven't finished with yet. They haven't told me they're ready for me. Um, and uh, I got, you know, grabbed my purse just yelling, trying to record him, recording him. I'm the one saying he's refusing because he's not refusing, of course, a, a second time. Uh, and uh, he then, uh, I did the transaction and uh, he was lying and claiming that all of my, um, all of my complaints were being taken seriously, which is impossible. You threw two of them away um, in the 17th of January, so you can't take them seriously if you've thrown them away and you have no record of them, uh, at least. And uh, these photocopies that I, you just carried outside when you picked up my things illegally are some of the only evidence that it happened. And uh, he called me Miss Fitzpatrick at this point, and that's when it occurred to me that um, it was him. That's when I realized because he called me Miss Fitzpatrick on the 17th of January as well. And at that moment, I was so angry. Uh, we, you know, he had been derelict of duty all morning, um, lying to me, abusing me with lies, like like uh, my complaints were being taken seriously while he's refusing to take a complaint about himself, um, about him covering up for other people. He's refusing to take a complaint about that. So I did, you know, march up and get real close, but I didn't touch him because that's more powerful. Nonviolence is more powerful. I didn't, I'm not about to touch the man. He's got a gun and a taser and I don't. He well, weighs me by 70 pounds and I'm the one in the right and he's the one who's derelict of duty and covering up both for other officers who were corrupt and now also covering up for himself. So... I pretty sure I got pulled away. He told me to move and I said no. Either he stepped back and or I think both he stepped back and another officer pulled me away. And he elbowed me. 
um, in the lobby under the, under the camera and he said not to touch him and I said you're touching me you touched me and we bickered about it and he told me that to leave he'd been telling me to leave the whole morning but he told me to leave or he'd have me arrested for a uh, battery on the police a fel a law enforcement officer which is a felony and I said that's coercion because that's what it is trying to say you need to do what I'm telling you to do I'm a law enforcement officer. There is no law I'm enforcing by telling you to leave, but you aren't listening to me when I've been telling you to do something. And now I'm going to threaten you with a felony charge if you don't do what I say. That's coercion. And I told him so. I said, if I'm guilty of battery on a police officer, you arrest me right now. So I established that I didn't have to leave, that I could sit there quietly if I wanted to. I pulled up a couple more of these citizen complaint affidavits. This is one, one of the ones that I picked up and I sat down there in the lobby to start writing more. What I was gonna do with them, I don't know, come back the next shift, I don't know mail them that's one of the ways that you can send them i don't know what i was going to do but i sat down because he can't tell me to leave and he can't do that this is seven, six months at this point of these people denying their misconduct which was egregious and has upturned my life and i sat down and was writing and i was surrounded by officers and one of them said to me stand up miss fitzpatrick nothing about me being under arrest what, what i was under arrest for not stand up you're under arrest nothing like that just stand up miss fitzpatrick so i may, 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 may remain seated and i got hogtied um, my sandals went flying um and no no telling me to charge screaming what you know why what why am i under arrest what's the charge you know are you trying to arrest me as trespassing on police station like you did with, with city hall or you know or a felony this time and what are you doing here wouldn't tell me wouldn't tell me so i was in the back of the car in handcuffs no shoes um and uh like an animal mother gathered up uh, it behind me i'm talking about me and i'm screaming about you know what's my charge what's my charge so i slipped out of one of my handcuffs um and showed them because i wanted to know my charge and this attracted them such that uh i was pulled out of the car and brutalized um with no shoes on so and it was asphalt so i was trying to keep my feet off of the hot asphalt kicking around and I got, um, oh, oh, did you get that on camera? And they gave me resisting arrest with violence. So I got two felonies. Now, um, it gets worse. It gets worse in that um, public defender didn't respond to my calls. Uh, phone was illegally confiscated. It took me more than a week to get it back. Officer um, falsified material when giving it back. I have hard evidence of that. Nobody's seen it except for my counselor with comprehensive treatment court who stood right here and told me that one of the reasons the neither public defender was calling me back was because Northport police are so corrupt. Now, that was the fifth person um, who is, works for the government who during these months when I've dealt now with three criminal charges for doing nothing but stand up for myself after police broke laws and discriminated against me. Um, it was the fifth person, Captain Harvey with Northport Police Department at the end of January indicated that I was getting now involved with some of the more corrupt members of their force after these two complaints that I tried to put on in the 17th. Um, Melinda with CTC, her last name is Fizzle, I don't know how to spell it, stood right here at the end of June when she brought me paperwork to try to get me housing money help, which my landlady wouldn't give her information for, so I didn't get it. Um, she stood right here as I lamented that nobody had spoken to me about any of this. It was the end of June. I got these charges on the 5th of June and they're felonies and everyone's just treating me like I'm crazy because I'm upset about it. And, uh, she, I made her look at the information about the phone that said, and she stood right here saying that. Now, um, three members of the Sheriff's Department, which is Sarasota County, which is where I was incarcerated, three different members during my incarcerations indicated that this is a particularly corrupt police department. I'm not happy about this. This is the one that was in my hand that got crumpled up um, when I was um, hogtied. Um, so when I was supposedly a threat 
um, to police officers um, while I was sitting in a lobby, turned around, um, writing on the back of a, of a bench because my full manila folder was being carried outside um, with my purse next to me, into which um, Officer Bates is going to reach and take my phone illegally um, and um, have it for a week. So that when I get out, I don't have a phone, I have no connectivity, and I'm an hour away from my vehicle. On um, Friday afternoon, I, I have uh, the felony um, hearings. Um, on Friday morning, I have court um, for the misdemeanor. Um, and as I understand it, it should be dismissed at that time, but public resources should have never been used. None of the court visits, none of D uh, Judge Aaron's time, none of Judge Quartermain's time, none of the bailiff's time, none of my counselor Melinda's time, all of that taxpayers have been paying for, and none of it should have happened. It is all a result of Deputy Chief Morales, instead of taking responsibility for misconduct that absolutely occurred, denying it and having me arrested because I wouldn't stop speaking the truth. Um, so uh, things look real bad uh, for the felony hearing. Uh, I have a ride up there with Melinda, who, who I'm going to have to, who I am now, and then also in court going to have to break up that she mentioned this corrupt thing that's not counseling me that's not fair i'm in my it's the end of june and these particular corrupt cops have been coming to came in my house and first terrorized me on the 4th of january it's not good counseling of me while you're standing there saying oh i don't know whether or not your felonies are going to stay on your record if you put them this way and nobody's talking to you about any of this because they're notorious well no that's what the public defenders are supposed to do if if there's a if there's a corrupt police department who's using criminal charges to harass somebody and to cover up how they started harassing someone for discriminatory reasons reasons in the first place, then exactly who is supposed to protect me are the public defenders. And meanwhile, she's excusing them from helping for that reason. This isn't fair. It's been horrible. It has been horrible. And um, there's a possibility that the hearing results in me getting picked, taken off to the state hospital for up to six months. Um, which, and I've never spoken to a public defender about the case.